Yeah. All right. Hi, Jessica. How are you doing today? I'm good. So you're working on your project number four. I'm working on my second four. How's it going? It's going pretty good. Um, what I decided to do is, it actually was kind of, it's a project-based learning. Mm -hmm. So I was reading an article, um, and it was, it just was interesting to me. It was comparing um, school lunches, like from other, the typical food of a student in other countries versus the U.S. And it was really interesting to me, like the different nutrition and all that kind of thing. And so I was just thinking, you know, I was just wondering with our students, I think it would be something they were interested in learning because a lot of them are in health right now. They do the health elective. Um, Is that ninth grade then? Yes. So what I decided to do was take my ninth graders and have them for a week analyze what they were eating. So I taught them how to use, there's a program on the computer where you can type in like what you eat, like your nutrition. And we just did lunch because we wanted to compare lunch. Yes. And so, and then they use that article and it has all the pictures, it has actual pictures of other students lunches from other countries. And so they're writing a discussion. It needs to be a group project, but the first part is individualized. So doing their research first, right? Doing the research, they're, they're going to research basically, you know, their, their averages and look at the average meal for another country. And um, the tricky part is, is that we are now going into the part where we have to do a group project. But you know, I like my Google Docs because, you know, oh, they, they can do it together. together. So they're going to do it together. Awesome. So, they're um, responding on a Google Doc right now. It's just discussion about the article and their results. And then they're going to have to, they're in groups of five. So I have 10 ninth graders. So they're in five and five. Because otherwise, 10 kids in one is too much. Too much. So what they have to do is they have to recommend, you know, like they have to pretend like they're going to the government. Like, you know, we have the Michelle Obama lunch program right now, which is in place still. They need to recommend after the research what would be an appropriate Monday through Friday meal plan for students. So that's what they're looking. For. Yeah. So that's, I mean, food engages. That's what I was so. thinking. The article was like <laughs> so perfect. great, and you'll see it when I send it to you. It was like it had the food, and some of it looked amazing from other countries, and some of it was like, uh, mush. You're like you know. And so I thought that was pretty cool. Like, and my kids were all in. They were like tracking their meals. And awesome. So they totally got engaged. And on. Did you have any kind of complications? Um, let me think. Some of them I felt like were trying to eat. Maybe it wasn't their typical meal because I told them at my LP meeting I said, okay, for this next week. And so I wonder if, looking at them, I wonder if, just two of them, if it maybe wasn't realistic data and maybe I should have had them, I don't know, try to remember what they ate and go back next time, but that's kind of where I was at. So that's the only okay. thing. So you feel like they were padding it to their advantage, maybe trying to look good. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to judge them. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm hearing that the um, kids are really engaged. What a great, what a great concept. Yeah. And you're getting some, you're not, you haven't got all the feedback yet, but you're getting feedback. No, yeah, right now they're still in the the stage where they're communicating with each other and trying to figure out their recommendation in each group, what they're going to recommend. Like, they, they have to do, like, where they're recommending, you know, a new lunch program. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's cool because one of their assignments already, or one of the standards in health, was to, like, you know, you yeah. have, they have to track have already. Kids. So instead of doing that assignment again, they did this instead. Oh, awesome. kind of analyze their nutrition. So that would be, it was kind of cool because I didn't have to add an extra thing for them yeah. they just use their current corporate, that lesson already that's built into yeah. their their curriculum that's a perfect way to do it i just think you're amazing i love the idea too picking food i'm a foodie yep <laughs> so um so as you're watching some of the results come in do you feel like they're they're living up to what you expected um yeah it's different because you know the the article was based in a with school setting and that some of my students are at the resource center but others are at home so you definitely see a varied um you know as far as lunch versus what's brought at the resource center right. yeah. versus what you know yeah because you can have leftovers at home easier That's than you can have exactly at a school you have to keep leftovers it, you definitely home. see more the chips and the package and yeah, those things packaged with our stuff. resource center and I feel like, well, maybe they can't control that. You know, they can't always, you know, convenience. Build. Whereas the ones that are in independent study totally have mom making their meals. And some of these meals, I'm like, oh, man, I need to go to your house yeah. for lunch. Yeah, yeah we so, signed up for a meal plan. Yeah, delivery. seriously. 
Awesome. What a fantastic lesson. I love sitting and talking to you and getting some of your ideas and your enthusiasm. It's wonderful. Um, sounds like you've got it pretty under control. You're on top of this. Uh, any questions for me? Um, well, I wanted to bring up Cycle 5, which is my next cycle, and it's self directed inquiry, so basically I get to pick on what I want to work on and what I need to improve on. Where your strengths and weaknesses kind of Yeah, so remember I, I took that survey in the beginning, and so when I kind of asked my boss, like, she knows my weak areas, like, she knows the things that I struggle with, and so one of the things I need to work on, and connected to the CSTP standard, which is like for teachers that, you know, I'm supposed to be working on, is I was looking at, like, retainment and, um, especially in special ed and like, what's it called, burnout? Obviously we know like the rates oh, yeah. are really high. And some of the reasons, and one of them is, you know, not knowing how to deal with um, conflict well or, um, you know, criticism well. And that's one of my tough areas. So this next cycle, I want to work on that because I find myself being discouraged when parents are upset or, you know, other teachers or coworkers I work with are upset at me, and I'm like you know, like if you're the type of person where you're more sensitive, you think about it at night, and it's oh, it's so stressful. So oh, I don't know how I can do that. I was thinking maybe tracking myself and trying to see. I think that's a good idea because I bet you are so much better at it than you expect. That you, I think your your self reflection. I bet you're better at it than you think you are <laughs> because you're a problem solver, and I can see that already. And the thing is, how I deal with upset people is I like a challenge. Yeah. And I kind of like challenges. So when people get mad, it's just a different way of communicating. And when they're mad, you're hearing their heart. And you're like, because then now you can get to the bottom of the situation. Yeah. And if you're at the bottom, you can build up and you can fix it to the best of your ability. Yeah. You can't always fix everything. Yeah. But you're getting it inside of that person. That's going to be actually helpful, even though it's coming from maybe an area that's kind of helpful to you because they're in here. Yeah. The thing is that they always go back to don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. And a lot of parents, when they're dealing with their children and they're talking about it, it's because of fear. It's not something personal to you yeah. that you're not doing it. They're, they're looking at their child and they're seeing their struggles and they have a panic attack. Yeah. So don't take it personally yeah. and realize, and then just give them a lot of encouragement. And look at it as a challenge. Like, yeah. I see that situation. I understand and feel, you know, that the same thing when you're talking about. You want to give that feedback, repeat their, their, their concerns. I hear you say that this is the problem, this is the problem, okay. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to see the solutions the best. If I can't find the solutions, I have plenty of people that I can put their mind to. And together we'll work together and we'll, we'll work to do that. So it's always just as a challenge and not personal. That's yeah. the number one thing. Yeah. It's funny because, like, all the other girls that are kind of in the same position, we went from being a personalized learning teacher to working more in special ed. Yeah. And we and you look at the people that are seasoned in special ed, they have more of a rough skin, but still staying gentle, but everything doesn't affect them so much. Right. You know, but we were all just, this fear has been tough with lots of tears and yeah. sensitive sensitivities. And it's like, I can't, I can't continue to go on with this, you know, so right. I have to learn how to deal with that. And you know, I'm on the opposite because I'm a little jaded, like, oh, get over it. <laughs> well, yeah, but see, that's but how I see the people that have been in this country. Yeah. A while. I have to balance it out too. It's yeah. a balance. It's that balance yeah. of, of not taking it too personally, take it as like a, 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 you're getting the heart of the person when they're angry, and, and it's a, a situation to solve. And you can't you can't always solve everything. The let go of things that aren't personal. Yeah. And no, I, I guess because I have that different perspective, and I'm always sharing my perspective as a as a person with a learning disability. Yeah. That. I can do it, and I'm always telling you, you're reading ten times better than I did at your age. And if I can make it to this place, you can make it too. So, um, use those examples when Edison was told unimaginable, and um, also Einstein, so many of them. And know that this is a struggle for now, but it doesn't have to be it's a struggle for always. You can do it. I do. So that's kind of what I'm focusing on. I think I'm just going to, you know, do kind of a journal type thing of when a response comes and then journal out how I'm going to respond to this and you know I'm I'm a verbal processor so kind of talk, it, I mean, yeah if I talk out. through it so I think if I write through it and kind of clar clarify my thoughts of 
what is the intent of this person? Right. How can I work towards the intent not, and filter out the attitude or the, right. you know, and not let that get in the way? Right. Exactly. So that's kind of what I think I'm going to work on for Cycle Fun. That's perfect. For myself. Because you're always going to be dealing with, you're, you're looking at parents that are, are worried about their kids. And they have, and usually, sometimes a lot of times, that the parents also struggle. So they have double fear. They have fear of their child, but also memories returning back of their childhood. It's, it's double fear. So I know that 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 anger is going on. Yeah. We're going on. Are we good? We're waiting yeah. ten minutes. So. All right, ten minutes. It's only supposed to be five to six. Oh well, then we can cut the cut cut it.